market. Hi, I'm Gary Megan, obsessed with food, always on the road, and the road has led me back to my favourite destination, India. I love this country for its colour. Oh, it's culture. And mouth-watering cuisine. If only you could taste it. Wow. <laughs> and nothing brings it all together like India's festivals. A shower of flowers! And because of the fervour and frenzy with which these are celebrated, I'm calling them mega festivals. Today, I'm in Kolkata, the city of joy, to take part in a mega festival that has gripped the city, dotted with magnificent pandals, energetic music and dancing, <laughs> bold displays of art, and of course, delicious food. Over the next few days, I'll go pandal hopping and learn drumming. I'll keep pace with the festival rush, or at least I'll try to. Never have I stood in amongst so many people and even pick up a culinary skill or two. This is Mega Festival Durga Puja. Tara Tare Chalo! Kolkata, a city of viceroys, artists and Bengali babus. And this aristocratic city is known to be pretty laid back for 355 days of the year. But for the remaining 10, to town, Kolkata can't stop celebrating. There's this electric energy pulsating through the city during this 10-day mega festival that is Durga Puja. And when the city streets turn into a sea of humanity, there's only one thing you can do. Just get swept away. Durga Puja, Kolkata's mega festival, which is included in UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity, transforms the metropolis. A study conducted in 2019 revealed that the 10-day Durga Puja is a four and a half billion dollar economy in itself. It generates an income for over 50 million people across the state, either directly or indirectly. All the frenzy is centered around the pandals or temporary temples, home to Goddess Durga during the 10-day period. And there are over 2,000 of them in Kolkata alone. And I've come to one of the biggest in the city, the Sri Bhumi Pandal. I think I'm going to have to wait to get in there. But just look at that. I have never, ever in my life seen so many people. Sri Bhumi is known for its Massive pandals, so people are excited, and I've been told there's going to be a million people here. And I think that might be an understatement. How am I going to get in? Well, in this business, it's all about contacts, and I've got a couple of people that are going to help. Supravo and Ritvika run a theatre startup and are part of Kolkata's vibrant art scene. I must be honest, I love being a VIP, 
but I feel a little guilty and I'm trying to ignore all those people that way. Yeah, they have like a five hour waiting time out. Oh my goodness. Some of them are returning because they can't make it to the panel oh, right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now I feel even more guilty. So what's so special about this panel? Like to wait five hours, come on. You'll go in and see. There's a reason people are waiting here for five hours. That is spectacular. I thought I was in Calcutta, and I think I've taken the wrong turn because that's St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican City. The people who made this, they've never visited this in person. So they've done their research on internet and have come up with this. Unbelievable. This is a temporary structure which is created out of, say, wrought iron, fiberglass, and it's humongous. It's like 103 feet in height. 84 feet in width. That's the structure of the Bandar. And they've used 5,000 bamboo to make the skeleton of this. When I look at the marble, it looks like marble pillars, gold. I mean, even the, the statues look like, you know, they're no, carved out of granite, you know? And the lighting just brings everything alive. As grand and huge as the pandal is from the outside, I'm blown away by the magnificence of the idol. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you can see the care and attention given to the detail. Now I know what all the fuss is about. Gus. Whatever jewelry is she's donning on her, it's all made up of gold. Apparently we've got a figure, it's worth 32 crore rupees. That's almost... Uh, That's $4 million? $4 million. $4 million but it's been specifically made for this pandal. You cover the front door, you cover the back door, and I'll slide out with the gold, you know? <laughs> but that is easily said than done. There's a network of CCTVs at the pandal, many of them pointing right at the idol. The images feed into a central control room where volunteers keep an eye on the jewellery 24-7. I noticed that Durgamar Idol is killing a demon. That is Mahisha Saw, a demon who could take the shape of a buffalo, among other things. In fact, he had a boon that ensured he would never be killed by a man or a god. With this superpower, he conquered heaven and earth. The divas poured in all their energy, or Shakti, to create a feminine form Durga, who would go on to defeat Mahisha Saw. It's late in the evening when we emerge from the pandal. But it looks like the party's going to go late into the night. There's an old world charm about Kolkata, and one feels transported back in time. Uh, one ticket, please. How much? Please. Kolkata has the only surviving network of trams in India, and during Durga Puja, you won't see many. So, if you see one, my advice is jump on, and it's a different way to see the city. The tram has brought me to a rather buzzing place. I think this is my stop. I'm getting off. This is the famous Mullet Gut flower market. Home to the freshest flowers in Kolkata. And the demand skyrockets during Durga Puja. There is a mad rush at the market. And this is one of Asia's biggest flower markets. And during Durga Puja, everybody comes to this market. <laughs> 
Everybody's getting a bit pushy and shovey, but I'll tell you what, I am completely lost. Anybody seen the director? Vishal? 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 Up, oh, up, no, there he is. We're good. But like the hero's second coming, Vishal, our director, returns. All I can say is, I'm pleased it's not me that got lost. There's this cacophony of sound and colour. <laughs> and a heady smell of all the flowers, rose and jasmine particularly. And also this, this frenetic energy, almost like the bees that are buzzing around. Absolutely amazing. But I just don't want a window shop. I've been invited to a home. And I don't want to turn up empty-handed. And these are beautiful, and there's 25 lotuses in here. How much? 400 rupees. So there's 50 rupees to the Australian dollar, so what, 25 cents per flower? That's pretty good. Can I take these? Can I take this one? 800? Yeah. Thank you. Loaded with flowers. I love it. I'm heading to a Banidi Bari. These are old palatial homes that once belonged to Bengal zamidars or landlords. The tradition of celebrating Durga Puja started in Banidi Baris in the 17th century. Sajit and Malvika, who have gathered their extended family to celebrate Saptami, the seventh day of Durga Puja. Hello, how are you? Good. Namaskar. Good. Yes. Namaskar. Welcome to the Puja. Thank you for the invitation. And I bought these for the Pushpanjali, the flowers as requested. So hope that's okay. Yes, wonderful. You're just on time because we're about to start the Pushpanjali. Uh, Welcome. Shall we go? Yes, yes. On this day, devotees offer pushpanjali, or offerings of flowers, to Mar Durga. So, Babi Pishi, what is the significance of that? Significance, this is basically to ward off evil and to welcome the positive vibes. Right. And it's always your job to do this. Because I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show me how to do it? OK. So you put one lip under. Yeah. And one lip over. Yeah. <laughs> try, try, try. It'll happen. It'll happen. Hang on. <laughs> try, try. Try, try. By the fifth day, you'll be able to. It's Gary Megan surrounded by Gary's angels. Is that right? Oh, well, if oh, you want to put on. it that way. Come on. Give me my moment <laughs> yes, of glory. Yes, Gary's angels. I love it. So is there a sense of responsibility to keep this tradition going and alive and well? I think there is. A lot of the women around you, though we are Gary's angels, we are also <laughs> entrepreneurs, lawyers, of executives, course, yeah. and have you know full working lives. But we take time out for the family pujo. So uh, Durga Puja is a celebratory time and uh, Bengalis love singing, so uh, Mamunu Pishi will give us a song. Purano shei dine katha bhul bikire hayo shei chukhir dakha pranir katha shei ki bola ja. Sitting in Malvika and Jeet's Bonedi Bari amongst people who accepted me as a friend, and I feel the feminine energy of Durga Ma lift me. An energy that moves the spirit of millions of people. 
to create something extraordinary. Look what I found. It's regal, isn't it? But with all these celebrations, I fancy something a little sweet. So, Tara Tari Chalo! That's Bengali for Let's Go Fast. I'm heading to a 130 year old sweet shop called Balaram Malik Radaraman Malik, or simply Balarams. Sudeep Malik is the fourth generation of a family that runs this business and is a man who keeps a watchful eye as millions of sweets make it from the kitchens to the counters for this festive rush. Sudeep. Hello. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you answered my message. Surely. And it, you must be getting slammed at the moment. Yeah, this is the busiest time of the year. So I recognize this. Mish, mishti doi. Yeah, I kind of, but there's some things I don't recognize. Like what's that one this there? This is mango mishti doi. This is the most famous one. And then what's this one here? This is like a, it looks baked. It's called uh, shorer mishti doi, but it's, it's actually baked. It's uh, cooked overnight. I've never seen this. Can we try that too? Like a shorer doi there? Oh yeah. Lovely. Is this traditional dessert or is this... Very something? traditional, very traditional. This mango one is delicious. This is another superstar. This is called baked rasgulla. I, I looked you up and this was one of the things that, <laughs> uh, that came up was baked rasgulla. I've never heard of it. Oh, yeah. See, I prefer this. Thank you so much. Don't be offended, but rasgulla, I, I like it, but I can leave it. But this, this is lovely because it's uh, caramelized and toasty. If only you could taste it. Sandish occupies pride of place in a Bengali sweet shop. And this cottage cheese dessert has been given many avatars here at Ballarams. So what's the most, what are the most popular choices? The popular, most popular is this Jol Bhara Sandish. Ah, look at that. How are these made? Jol Bhara means water filled. <laughs> ah, but it's not filled with water though, is it? What's it's it filled for? with syrup or honey. Ooh, it's always nice when you find a little surprise in something. I'd love to try making something. So could we? Of course. Let's come and get it. Look at this. Show me how. Show me how to do it. We have to put pistachio first. So pistachio first. That way round. Put it in. And half half the mold. Okay. So half a mold into there. A little bit of pressure. And then a hole inside. And then this is ah. I see. Then you pour the syrup. Yep. And then seal it, seal it. Okay. The first one bent out of shape, so I slyly slip it into a pile behind me. I need to get better and soon. Yeah, so you go like that. And then look, one. All I'm feeling is the pressure of those eyes over there looking at our ter my terrible uh, efforts. You know what, it's like all jobs in the kitchen. You know when you're at home and you're chatting and you're with your family and you're making 12? What a lovely job. When you're in a factory, the joy, for some reason, just seeps away. But when I walk away, it'll take them all and throw them away. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to sell them 1,000 rupees per piece. <laughs> that was quite a sugar rush. To burn that energy off, I'm heading to the Newtown Pandle where an all-women Dalki troupe is practicing. I love it. This troupe is female Dhakis. Okay. This is the first time like we have got the female Dhakis. That's pretty special, isn't it? Yes. And how do people react with a, a female troupe of Dhakis? It's an overwhelming response, okay. like Good. enormous, enormous. And now you'll have young women that want to aspire to be yes, yes. Dhaki players yes. and, you know, the lineage will carry on. And eventually you just <laughs> push, out the, push out the men yeah, that and it just becomes, it becomes female Dhaki troops. I love it. I want to have a go. Ooh. Oh, this is, this is not the lightest thing in the world, is it? So this one. Is that right? So this one is like... Are we ready for some bad taki playing? So, slow down a second. Gaz needs a little bit of time. Perfect, perfect. All right. 
All right. Okay. <laughs> I reckon I leave it up to the professionals. But where there is music, can dancing be far behind? Amazing. I love that. Did you see my little moves there? Did you like that? So what, what is this dance called? This is called Dhunuchi dance. Dhunuchi. This is Dhunuchi. Okay. It's an earthen pot yeah. where we put Ooh, coconut. That's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. It's hot. Uh, we put coconut coir and dhuno. It's an incense. It the creates pot. a smoke and we dance with this in front of Ma Beautiful. Durga. And what's the purpose of the Dhunuchi it's dance? It's welcoming Ma Durga. It's a part of our worshipping. This is a practice? Yeah, this is a practice. The main performance is on Ashtami. Which is, where it's does that fit eighth within? Eighth day of Durga Puja. Eighth day, yeah. okay. But you have to show me a few yeah. steps. Just we can take a right. pot. So take the pot. And we are going to dance along with the drum beats. Okay, the and I'll try and follow you. So that's the same kind of... Yes. Okay. Take just a question. Do men dance differently to women? No. So no, you're not teaching me something you're going to laugh at, no? No, no. I'm just no, checking because, you know, <laughs> if I turn up and I'm doing, like, this dance and all these men go, what's he doing? No, no, no. Okay. Absolutely Right. No. Play, play away, Taki. Let's go. Let's go. Ready? Okay, so it's... Oh, you've got to do this. So it's the same thing. Oh, hang on a minute. You went a different direction. <laughs> I am so uncoordinated. Maybe I should teach him a few of my own moves. Look. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling good. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hot. Did I do OK? Yeah, excellent. I feel so uncoordinated. It's ridiculous. And because this is hot too, and the sun, I am just melting. So we are inviting you for the performance on Ashtami. I'd love to come. I'd love to come. But I don't have to dance. Do I have to dance? Yes, you need to dance. Why, in front of people? Yes. Oh, I'm a, sh I'm a shy guy. I don't know if I can do it. And can I, can I come like this? No, no. Oh. Oh. You're going to wear an Indian attire. Yeah. A kurta pajama. A kurta pajama? Yes, for this dance. Yeah. <laughs> Will I look nice in a kurta pajama? Yeah, Will be yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll be ready for inspection, you know? And I'll join you for a dance. That's lovely. I've been asked to dress up for the occasion, so it's time to go shopping for some traditional attire. But it looks like the whole city has got the same idea. Never have I stood in amongst so many people. Like, when I look around, there is thousands and thousands of people here. It makes me feel I'm being swept away on the current. So we got stuck right in the middle of the crossroads. Chalo, chalo. That's nice. Porta? Uh, uh, mmm, fancy. Wow. I'm like a king in this. What do you reckon? How much is this one? 195. See? Oh, I've got a. Oh, there's a pain. 15. On name page you. Fixed price. <sighs> Fixed price. Please do not bargain. I didn't see that on the way in. But I love a bargain. I like this. That one's nice too. I need my wife, you know, to help me pick one. And how much are these? $14.45. Again, the pain. Oh. And then it would go with something like this. Like a pajama. It's expensive though. How much are these? This is six hundred. So fifteen hundred for both of them. For you, it's a... Fantastic. Do you want to test it? Because I can try it on, but you're the expert. It's a good size? It's a good price? Definitely. OK, I trust you. Anyway, my ashtami is sorted now, so that was good shopping. Love it. I cannot wait to be part of the ashtami celebrations. You were looking too good. The eighth day of the mega festival. Oh! Who wants this one? Me! Nope. Doga Puja.
Calcutta to celebrate the 10-day mega festival, Durga Puja. So far, I've been part of mega crowds. Stepped inside jaw-dropping pandals. Tasted the best of Bengali sweets. But things are about to kick into an even higher gear, if you can believe it. <laughs> and right now, I'm quite pleased with myself for the deal I've got on the curtain. Are you it's okay. I put a lot of effort into my outfit, and I should do, because Ashtami is the eighth day of Durga Puja. And it's considered to be the most auspicious day in a 10-day festival. It's also the day that a fierce form of the goddess emerges and is worshipped. To find out more, I meet Devi. She was part of a study that got Durga Puja recognised as a UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity. This is the preparation for the Shondi Puja, which is one of the most important rituals in Durga Puja. And what you see here is 108 lamps, or diyas. Yeah. And we're going to be lighting this during the Shondi Puja. Durga Ma is offered 108 lotuses. And Chapman Ball, a meal with 56 dishes. So it takes place at the juncture of Ashtami and Navami. So the last 24 minutes of Ashtami and the first 24 minutes of Navami is when we perform the Shondi Puja. Do you notice something? All the priests here are women. What's even more interesting about this particular puja is that the chanting and the drumming is being done by female priests. So in terms of the priestess, that is really unusual. That is very unusual because traditionally we've always seen men performing these duties. So it's very welcome and very refreshing to see. I don't know if I can do that. It's a special sound made by the women. And I hope I can muster half the energy as Kokoli greets Kakoli, me. Kakoli, how are you? Hi. This is Devi. Kakoli. You're looking too good. Ladies, what do you reckon? Huh? The Punjabi? <laughs> I love it. So you want me to actually dance in front of everybody? Yes. How embarrassing. It's terrible. No, no. Only if you do it. I'll do it. You'll do it as well? I'll do it. Okay, come on then. was incredible. I, I lack a little rhythm, but what a beautiful experience. Amazing. But I'll leave it to the professionals, shall I? Which is you. <laughs> I've embarrassed myself. I know it, but I've had fun. That's what you call a classic Gary move. You know what else is a classic Gary move? Food. I'm joined by Devi's friends as we have Pushkas, a quintessential Calcutta street food. Wait for it, wait for it. This is the great push. Wait, wait, wait. No, the no, great no. pushka tasting. How good is the Calcutta pushka? Ready? One, two, three. What do you think of it? Yeah, it's nice. Nice. Mm. Show me, show me one. So a little bit of this mixture. Right. I've got to speed up. Right. Sure enough. I've got to get my street smarts up. 
Non joking is actually tasting better. They're tasting better. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm skimming all the coriander off the top. There's all this Fuck. coriander and chili on the top. Who wants this one? Me. No. Mmm. <laughs> Pretty good. You know, in India we have the saying, which is "Aapke hato mein jadoo hai," which means you have magic in your hands, and that's how nice is that? But the magic comes from these guys, right? Oh, look. Oh, that's another, another one. one. Another one. One more. One last one together. One last one round. Last one. Okay. Lovely, huh? Nine, ten pushkas. I'm very happy. The restless beats of the dakis. The energy of the Danucci dancers and the flavors packed inside those tiny puchkas, Ashtami was intense. And one of the defining things about this festival is the massive crowds everywhere. This is the penultimate day in Calcutta's mega festival, Durga Puja. And I want to squeeze in a few more pandal hops if I can. Next stop, Chetla Pandal, which I've heard has been two years in the making. This is among the newer crop of pandals, which are sending out a powerful message by putting environment at the center of their design. It's designed to spark your sense of curiosity. This one, this is my favorite pandal so far. I can connect with it, these beautiful kind of natural materials. And what I see is these, you know, rigid but acrobatic figures, you know, entwined together and then almost, you know, sprayed across the ceiling. I meet Supravo, who introduces Hi. me to Shukrit. Shukrit, Hi. nice to meet you. A heritage conservationist by day and a classical musician by Hi. night. This entire structure, the entire decor has been made out of banana box. So it's, there's like 1.5 lakhs of banana box, which were used to create this over two years. That's lovely. And I love the idol. Looks wonderful. Yeah, all of this is made out of some part of the tree. Like, you can, we can see the bananas as the bangles. It's oh, yeah. So the banana fruit, which is actually what is kind of, you know, covering the goddess. Yeah. And also the main locket of the necklace. Oh, yeah, I can see now. That's actually a very, very beautiful flower. Yeah. A big one. I, I really like this. Chetla Pandal has been two years in the making, and it's made entirely of banana bark. It represents the very best of Bengal's artistic ingenuity. Every part of the banana tree has been used in the making of this idol. The fruit that adorned Ma Durga's hands, the flowers in the necklace, everything about this pandal is spectacular. Chetla Pandal is as thought-provoking as it is beautiful. And it is where my pandal hopping comes to an end, as is this mega festival. And this mega festival has a mega end. There's a final burst of Shakti that will reverberate through Kolkata. A burst of colors. Now we can. Yeah. And a thrilling ride accompanied by cries of celebration. And there goes Dugama. Oh my goodness. After nine days of frenzied celebrations, today is a bittersweet day. I'm heading back to Malvika's home 
where preparations are underway to bid farewell to Durgama. Malvika, how are you? Hi. There's lots going on in here, lots of noise. It's I brought a you a little, a little sweet treat. Thank you. For you. So what's happening? So this is the last act of the Durga Puja where we bid farewell to the goddess. Once again, the narrative is twofold. One is the victorious goddess is going back to the Kailash mountain okay. with her children. So there's celebration on one hand. And on the other hand, this is a daughter leaving her parents' home and going back to her in-laws. It's a bittersweet moment. But the sagging spirits perk up with a burst of vermilion. There's laughter once more and a playful mood. This normally is for just the married ladies in the group, but Mel Vicker has insisted on putting it on me. I don't mind. I'm game. Now we can. Yeah. <laughs> now they're having too much fun. So what's the significance of all this colour? This is Bijoya, which is a celebration of victory and uh, the goddess is victorious and is going back to her house. So we are bidding farewell and we put Sindur on her head and also married women then put Sindur on each other's face. But uh, in many homes now, single women, uh, women of all marital status yeah. is complicated, single, LGBT, the world, <laughs> they all do all it. All get involved, which is yeah. lovely. Which is lovely, yeah. yes. But there's another interesting tradition. Every year, one person from the family takes it upon herself to remain sad. She restricts herself to a room and thinks only sad thoughts. Paula Duga Maki Jane. Say it loudly. Yes. Yes. Oh, careful, careful. Paula Duga Maki Jane. Well, that was a bit of heave-ho. But when this puja started, people used to carry the goddess on their shoulders down to the Hooghly River and then submerge it. And I'm glad now that it's going on a truck and I can be part of it. Bolo de Kamaki Jalo! Jalo! I got to see the city in a completely different way, hanging on the back, chanting, and everybody paying their blessings as the truck went past and the idol went past, which is really lovely. But more than that, you know how I feel? It's just being part of that um, ceremony, being part of someone else's family, and really connecting in a very different way. What an experience, absolutely amazing. And there goes Dugamar, oh my goodness. And I understand the celebration, but I also understand the, the sadness attached to it, you know? as she returns home. Durga embodies creation and destruction. And what exists between these two things? Life. And this is what I've experienced in Durga Puja. The energy is infectious. The magnificent pandals, the drummers, the dancers, and I feel like I've been swept away in this frenzy of festivities. I'm exhausted, but I feel energized. And what I've come to realize is that culture and tradition is not something you can read about and understand. It's something you've got to experience. And how do you experience it? You experience it at Durga Puja, and you experience it in India's mega festivals.
What about No. Take 12. So if you're here during Polga Juja, oh. take 71. Ah, look, please, you don't take care. Okay. Normal, normal. <laughs> normal. Casual. The, the goddess appears in her most fierce form to be worshipped. Ah. Take 34. There's this electric energy pulsating through the city during the 10 day mega festival. That is Durga Puja. 20 rupees.